It is a plant that has been here in the lakes for 7,000 years, or maybe even longer, in the native community. There are many, many dialects, so even in, in, even in Curve Lake, and the one calls it Gaminch, the next calls it Gaming, the next one calls it Gaming. Yeah, but it all means at the shore or in a bay or you know at the waters at the water's edge. So my name is Mika Schipper. We are here at Gaming Nature Center uh, that's located between Lindsay and Bob Cajun, almost dead center between uh, those two towns. And uh, this weekend, this is a special weekend, we are doing traditional wild rice har harvesting. We've been eating it for thousands of years and it's one of our most important things. Like I've been told like you never waste wild rice. Like if you're if you're in bulk barn and you drop wild rice on the ground, you better pick it all up. <laughs> like I, and I've done that with my friend. He literally dropped like an entire bag of wild rice in bulk barn. We sat there for a half hour picking up every piece. Yeah, because like it's uh, it's just so sacred. Like it was yeah, like people like say that it was given to us, like that that's what was given to us to eat. Yeah, and it's always supposed to be picked and harvested and everything with a good heart and everything. Uh, especially when, because when you're giving it to other people and everything, you don't want to be spreading anything bad. And I've got a mentor from Hiawatha who, who knows like a lot about what we used to do, so he just kind of teaches me. My goal is to just pick it out as much information as I can about it, like uh, my people in the past, and just like hold on to it and spread it uh, to more people. First thing you'd want to do is make an offering to the wild rice, so you can get, you could canoe out like the day before you harvest. And you could offer some tobacco down into the roots of the wild rice to ensure a good harvest. Well, you're going to need these uh, before you go out. So these are racing sticks, and uh, these are usually made from cedar and uh, a bit longer than your arm. And uh, these are going to be used to pull the plant over, and then you'll tap the stick uh, to make the ripe rice grains fall off. And when you tap the stick, it just that the vibration travels through to the end and then into the stock, and that will make the right ones fall off. Keep doing that until you fill up your entire canoe. So you can see right here, we've got a bunch of uh, monomen that was collected today, so it's drying out in the sun. Then uh, you'll start a fire, and you'll put the rice inside this big pot. So you can picture it like that. So you'd put the rice inside the pot, and you'd start a fire under it, and then you'd stir the pot, it quite quickly and continuously for about 15 minutes or until you hear popping. Once you hear popping, you'll want to take it off uh, and keep stirring it or else it'll burn. So take it off and keep stirring it until it's cool. And then at that point, you should be able to roll this, uh, this little husk off uh, with your fingers and expose the dark and the inner grain. And that you move on to dancing the rice. So most people have heard of dancing the rice before, but you probably don't exactly know what it means. And it's making a hole in the ground about that deep and about that wide. And what you're gonna do is uh, place the rice in there on top of the tarp, and you're gonna put on some fresh moccasins or some freshly cleaned feet, and you're gonna dance the wild rice. And uh, you'd usually put your weight up on something uh, to help keep the weight off a little bit. All of these little, uh, husks will fall off and expose the inner dark rice, but then you're still left with all the really light, like uh, little husks. At that point, you would take a really shallow tray. So uh, what you'll do is you'll put a good amount of your rice that you've already parched and danced uh, into the winnowing tray. And you'll find which way the breeze is blowing uh, and you'll start dropping the rice inside uh, the shallow container. What that'll do is it'll allow the husks to fall, uh, to fall not as quickly and get blown away in the wind compared to the dark rice. So the rice will be heavier and it'll fall to the bottom and you can just keep throwing it up and the husks will keep flying away in the wind until you're just left with nothing but the dark rice. You know, it is treaty land, so that has given me personally the, the push to connect with, uh, with the native community here and and try to restore the property in the way it used to be and then do things, activities like the wild rice harvesting, uh, what is just, that fits all together um, in there. The underlying goal of everything we do is, is 
people connecting with nature.